So, so Frank, I, you know, as you know, we are sending off Michael with, um, you know, a, a whole big celebration, given that he's been on the air at WBGO for more than 35 years. Right. Um, and, you know, really a voice that everyone knows, um, everyone who listens to, you know, jazz radio in the New York metro and beyond. But there's another part of it that um, we felt we had to acknowledge, which is the, the you know, long legacy he has at Downbeat. Yeah. Um, and so I, I wanted to start just by asking you about your relationship with him um, and, you know, tell us, you know, how far back that goes and, and what the, you know, what your interactions have been like. Right. Um, well, I'm proud to, I'm proud that we were able to share <laughs> Michael with WBGO all these years. Um, uh, he is one of a kind as a personality and as a writer, what I've always appreciated about Michael is his voice comes through every article that he writes. And that that's, it's a rare thing. And it's such a positive, uplifting voice. And there's so many things that you go into. Um, and there's, it's just, and he's, he's, he's smart. He's witty. He's, he's, he's knowledgeable. He's funny. He's, he's, he's insightful. He knows a lot, a lot of things about a lot of topics. And there's just, there are very few people that are like him out there. Fortunately, we get to meet a lot of those, you know, in our business, we meet a lot of people who have a lot of interest and one of them is jazz, you know, and he's one of those people for sure. You yeah. know, you could get him on the subject of, of history or of, of, um, of, 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 uh, of, of Broadway musicals for crying out loud. You know, um, uh, one of the things I have always connected with him on are Broadway musicals. I love them. And, and God forbid you get him on the subject of food because food, <laughs> he will tell you every great restaurant in New York City. And if you made a list of them, and I have, <laughs> you, you go to those restaurants and you're going you're gonna to have a great meal. So uh, he's just one of those guys that, that, that has, has been he started writing for the magazine in the mid '60s. I think 1965 was his first one, when he was at the University of Indiana. So he did an interview with David Baker. He did a lot of interviews there, from there and there. But like in the, you know, I first connected with with Michael as a writer um, when I was in college, and I started looking back through down, old downbeats and stuff. And one of my favorites, I, I took some notes, and, and one of my favorites was he in 1970. Um, he did a, a, a review of Woodstock, the soundtrack from Woodstock. Yeah. And, and his rating was one cosmic huzzah. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. It was like, not no stars. It was one cosmic huzzah. That was the rating he gave it. And then he had a quote. He goes, here we are trapped in the amber of the moment. There is no why Kurt Vonnegut. He took the quote from Kurt Vonnegut. And his last line of the review was history is myth. 19 August 30th 1970 I go that, that's a that's a critic that's a reviewer mm -hmm. who puts something into it and it's not you don't always have to have the exact star ratings to get a point across that this is what is this thing and what do you think about it and, and he was just very 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 creative um one of my favorite interviews he ever did for the magazine was uh, uh an interview with Dizzy Gillespie Fat Cats at Lunch from the early 70s and you know he gets dizzy talking about not just music, but also his Baha'i faith. And one of the first times he really, really gotten deep into it. Yeah. And, and, you know, they talk about food, they talk about Baha'i faith, they talk about, you know, um, how he got to this, how he got to this point, where's, where's, where his um, legacy was going, but in a way that is so conversational over lunch, it's two friends speaking over lunch. Yeah. And that's yeah. the ability that he had was that ability that has, is that ability to take people down that path of conversation. Um, when Michael celebrated his 40th anniversary as a contributor to Downbeat, we said, would you like to be the guest editor of the magazine for an issue? And, and he goes, yeah. And so he, and he goes, I go, what, what ideas do you have? And he goes, how would it be if we did everything from the Montreal Jazz Festival? And as you and I know, Montreal Jazz Festival was Michael Bourne's home away from home. Right. And, and that is, it is, and what he did was a send up to the Montreal Jazz Festival, deservedly so, because that festival was celebrating its 30th, I believe. And that festival and Michael connected in a way, it's just brought so many things together. Michael liked big, 
Montreal Jazz Festival is big. Michael <laughs> likes diversity. My, Montreal Jazz Festival is the most diverse jazz festival, music festival in the world with uh, flavors from all over the world, flavors from the avant-garde to the, to, to the to old school bebop, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to do, to rock and roll, to hip hop, to whatever. And he loved the way that that thing spread out and was just gigantic. And when you get to food, you never went to the Montreal Jazz Festival and saw Michael Board without going to what was a psychedelic pizza, mm. <laughs> it was <a> pizza <laughs> shop that he absolutely adored. So those were those were things. Those are things about Michael that I just a few quick memories. But I, I will tell you, there's one thing you know in sharing Michael as a contributor to Downbeat and as a radio DJ and a radio host for WBGO that still is one of my favorite things that we've ever done is Michael did an interview with Dave Brubeck back in the early 2000s, like 2003, I think. Um, and we timed it so it came out in our September issue, which comes out in August. And it came out on Labor Day weekend on WBGO. So it was a print downbeat interview and a radio interview with Brubeck that is absolutely incredible. Um, one of my favorite things is how Brubeck talks about being in Patton's army and they had to build a pontoon bridge. And he remembers going over the bridge and, 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 and it spurred a song. It, it caused him to write a song. Hmm. And Michael goes, what time was it? And he goes, oh, it was in 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> it was just like this, you know, it was just like a great question to ask. Oh, you, you wrote a song while walking across the bridge while you're, oh, by the way, in the art, while you're, you know, trekking across with, with an army boots, what, what time signature is it in? You know, so, <laughs> It's kind of a great thing. So those are a few, you know, it's, it's, he, and this is what I love about him. That whole idea of doing an interview on the radio, an interview in the magazine. Uh, he tried for several years to get the blindfold test as a radio show. Mm. And just, we could never get it off for whatever reasons. I think it's just time and, and, and whatever, but it was a great idea. He thinks big, he would, he tries new things. He's ambitious and, and, you know, that's that's where it just clicks for me is just that kind of ambitious joyous ambition is yeah. what I would, I would put to him yeah that's a great way to put it yeah uh, uh, you know you mentioned the first thing you said was that he's got this unmistakable voice in every piece yeah. and I think that's certainly you know obviously literally true on the air yeah I wonder if you you know as as an editor as someone who's worked with him on the page yeah how would you characterize that voice how would you describe it um, okay. It's something you try, you try to help along and not stamp out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you have editors that will, that will try to try to say, well, that, that's, that's too unlike everything in downbeat. For me, it was, it was always, and then for Ed Enright, for Jason Karansky, for all the editors through the years who have worked with, with Michael under my tenure. And that we're not even going back into this eighties and seventies, John Eflund and, and all the, the guys from the seventies, but it's a voice that you try to help you know, because he's a great writer. A good editor can help a great writer become even better. And mm -hmm. that's what you always tried to do. And that's one of the things is don't stamp out that voice because he would ask questions in a way that nobody else would. And he would write things in a way that nobody else would. And that's, um, that's a real, you know, uh, listen, that's what you and I try to do all of our lives is try to write something in a voice that we have mm -hmm. and make it authoritative. And fun. But he he could not only be authoritative, he could be fun, which is something that we oftentimes miss in jazz. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, there's a there's such a such a big personality, and it's very um, it's there's a spirit of hospitality to it. Right, right. Uh, sort right. of like invites you party. into his world. Yeah, yeah. In, exactly. That's it. You so hit it, and you know what? And that's the things about Michael as a person. It's because you know. Uh, there would be times where, you know, people would go to New York and they would meet with Michael and they go, oh, we went for Chinese food on the Upper West Side. And then I go, and you, you literally, you know, you, you feel jealous because you knew that there was going to be a conversation there. That would be outrageously fun, outrageously good. The food would be good. The company would be good. And that's Michael had that ability as a human being and as a professional, a broadcasting professional, as a writer to mm -hmm. invite people into his world and make them part of, of whatever was going on there, part of the party. So, yeah. 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 Well, you've mentioned a few pieces. Um, is there anything else uh, that you would point to as a quintessential Michael Bourne in downbeat byline? Oh um, gosh, that, you know that 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 Dizzy Gillespie interview and and um, 
that was that was probably the one that fat cats at lunch to me it just got so much out of dizzy in a way that that you just hadn't seen dizzy in that light before you know mm-hmm. he opened up you know he opened up he was very honest he was very very thoughtful and it was just a, a good conversation between friends. So I, I look at that one, and I think that one's that was probably my favorite. And that Brubeck interviews, just those two, I brought those up for a reason because mm-hmm. those are probably my two favorites um, of of all the great things that he's done over the years. Those are two; those are absolutely two of my favorites. Yeah. So um, I guess as a final uh, final note, if if you're let's say that you're addressing Michael now uh, as he's you know rounding the corner on the final lap at BGO uh, on the air, what message would you have uh, for him directly? Oh, okay. I'm coming to New York. We're going to go out for food. We're going to enjoy ourselves. I'm going to give you a big hug. Um, I, I miss seeing you. I miss, I miss hearing your voice on the radio. And, and that for me, this goes back to, you know, I knew Michael Bourne as a writer for Downbeat. And when WBGO started, I was living in Jersey City, New Jersey, working as a starting out my career as a, a newspaper journalist. And so I WBGO launched. And I remember one of the first voices I heard was Michael Bourne's. I go, I don't know who this guy is, but I really want to meet him someday. So proud to have gotten to not only meet him, but become a friend. And yeah. And um, geez, what, what a gift it what a gift it is to have Michael Bourne in my life. Yeah. And in our lives. So yeah. So thank you. All I can say.